so the topic for today's class is commissioning decommissioning and acl so commissioning means adding new machine to the existing cluster decommissioning means removing old machine from the existing cluster and acl stands for access control list which is uh, regarding the security in hadoop so basically uh, these are three small topics that's why i have clubbed them into a single class so we will be covering these topics one by one so let's start with the agenda for today's class so the agenda for today's class is what is commissioning role of include and exclude file entry for include and exclude file how to commission a new node what is decommissioning how to decommission an old node what is acl why do we need acl modify core site dot xml role of hadoop policy dot xml and the last is refresh service acl so this agenda is for uh, all these three topics so we'll be starting with what is commissioning so you know that hadoop is scalable from very first day we are talking that whenever we need we can increase or decrease the number of machine in a hadoop cluster so adding a new machine uh, to the existing hadoop cluster is technically known as commissioning so commissioning a new node will increase the storage and processing capacity of hadoop cluster yes that's absolutely right suppose previously we were having a uh, 10 machines in the cluster and now we are planning to add two more machine so adding two more machine will increase the storage as well as the processing power because previously jobs were distributed among uh, 10 machines and now whatever new jobs will be coming those can be distributed among 12 machines so we have more number of machines that means it will take less time to complete the jobs so whenever we think that our data is large and uh, we cannot store on our hdfs or the free storage on hdfs is getting decreased day by day or your jobs are taking too much time in this scenario you can think of that okay let's add some more machine to the cluster so adding the more machine single machine or uh, multiple machines to the running existing cluster is known as a commissioning so let's proceed to the next slide the next is role of include and exclude file you know that whenever uh, we have to do something new we have some configuration files in the conf directory till now we didn't talk about include or exclude file because we never need to do that but now today we are talking about commissioning and decommissioning that's why we will be talking about include and exclude file all previous configuration file uh, whatever we edited like core site hdfs site or master file slave file all these files were already available in the conf directory of hadoop we just opened the file and we edited those files but in this case include and exclude files are not available in the conf directory we need to create that so create two files in the conf directory of your hadoop home and you can give the name like include and exclude and creating a file into any location is quite simple you can right click and click on create new document give the name so initially you can create a two blank documents 
what are the contents required we'll be talking about that shortly but before that let's talk about what's the purpose of include and exclude file so include file as the name indicates contains the list of nodes or you can say the list of machines which are allowed to connect to master machine so whatever names is available in include file only those machine will be able to communicate with your name node other machine will not be able to do that and similarly exclude file contains the list of nodes which are supposed to be decommissioned as the name indicates exclude we are excluding those machine from our cluster so out of 10 machine if you are planning to uh, remove four machines we will be adding those four names to the exclude file now you may be thinking that if the name is available in include as well as in exclude then what will happen because include means that machine is part of your cluster and exclude means that should not be part of your cluster so if we are putting the same machine name into both the files then what's the meaning of that so in that scenario the machine can connect to master machine but cannot participate in storage or processing yes the combined scenario may be possible suppose you are planning to add uh, remove four machines so we cannot directly remove those machines because those machine may be participating in some map processing and moreover those machine contains our data that means we cannot directly shut down the system so we have a some predefined steps for decommissioning that means before those machine leaves your cluster you have to make sure that the data of all those machine have been copied to the alternate machines so they must these machines which are supposed to be decommissioned they can communicate with master machine just for decommissioning purpose so that they can simply copy their data to some alternate machine but they cannot participate in storage or processing if user is requesting something or user is uh, planning to execute some map produce job in these type of activity these uh, decommissioning machine will not be participating they will simply copy their data to some uh, other machines and then they will leave the cluster so this is very brief about include and exclude file once we will be talking about the steps involved in commissioning and decommissioning you will understand the purpose of these two files in more detail so we are moving to the next slide the next is entry for include file and exclude file whatever things we are doing we have to make some required changes in some configuration files as well so include and exclude files were uh, not xml files these were simple files just like master and slaves which contains only the name of some machines but we have to make the required changes in hdfs site.xml so what are the required changes the first property we will add the name of the property is dfs.host and the value is slash home slash nearest local cluster home hadoop 1.2.1 slash conf slash include because i have created include file inside the conf directory of my hadoop if you want to see the description so this property names a file that contains a list of hosts which are permitted to connect to the name node the full path name of the file must be specified if the value is empty all hosts are permitted so till now we were not using this include file and exclude file concept that means any machine which has the setup of hadoop can communicate with name node 
Similarly, we have the next property that is dfs.host.exclude. As the uh, name of the property indicates that we are talking about exclude file. And the value is slash home slash nearest slash local cluster home Hadoop 1.2.1 conf exclude. And the description of the same is this property names a file that contains a list of hosts which are not permitted to connect to name node. The full path of the list must be specified if the value is empty no hosts are excluded. Because we were not using this exclude file earlier that means no machine will be decommissioned no machine will be excluded. But when we are doing commissioning and decommissioning these two files will be playing their important role. So this is uh, all about what are the required changes uh, for HDFS site.xml file. So we are moving now to the next slide and this slide talks about the steps involved in commissioning. So let's uh, start with the first step. The first step is add the network address of the new nodes to the include file. Suppose previously your include file contains 10 names. That means those 10 machines were able to communicate with name node. And now we are planning to add two more machines. So until or unless we will add the name to the include file, those machines will not be allowed to communicate with name node. So that is required. That's why that is the first activity we are doing. So either the IP or the name, if you have defined the name in host file of new machines, you can specify those two names in the include file. You uh, previously you may have given the name like slave 1, slave 2, slave 3 till slave 10. And now you might have added two more names to your host file that is slave 11 and slave 12. So you can simply open your include file from the conf directory and add the two newly added names which is slave 11 and slave 12. Moving to the second step, update the name node with the new set of permitted nodes using below command. When your Hadoop is running and you are making any changes in any configuration file, those are not reflected immediately. So basically when you are starting your Hadoop, the content of all the configuration file will be loaded by uh, your uh, Hadoop services. So when the Hadoop was started, include file contained only 10 names. But now when your Hadoop cluster is running, in between you have added two more names. So automatically name node will not know whether you have made some changes in include file. So we have a command for that. And the command will intimate name node that we have made the required changes in the include file and please take the latest entries. The command is we will be executing from the bin directory that is dot slash Hadoop space DFS admin space hyphen refresh nodes and is capital. This command will refresh the node list and now the name node will know that instead of 10, now we have 12 machines. So, accordingly, it can consider those two machines for storage. If a file is coming, previously it was splitting the file and it was storing on 10 machine. But now as name node knows that there are two more machines, so this time if a file will come for storage, it will split and it will distribute among 12 machines. So just like we intimated name node that we have added two more machine. Similarly, we need to intimate job tracker as well. Because job tracker is the another uh, master process which deals with your MapDUS execution. So if we will intimate job tracker, that will also consider two newly added machines. So previously, whenever job was coming, it was distributing among 10 machines. 
and this time if we will uh, tell the job tracker that we have added two more machine now onwards job tracker will uh, start distributing the jobs among 12 machines so the second command we have to execute from the bin directory of hadoop is dot slash hadoop mr admin hyphen refresh nodes n is again capital so this way now your both the master processes that is name node and job tracker are aware that you have added two more names to the include file now one more thing we need to do is update the slaves file with the new nodes so that they are included in future operation performed by the hadoop control script yes when you do start all.sh or when you do stop all.sh your services will be started or stopped on those machine whose name are available in the slaves file we have added the names to the include file that's fine but slave file still contain 10 names when we installed hadoop cluster on multiple machines we had provided those 10 names so we need to add two newly added machines name to slaves file as well that is slave 11 and slave 12 otherwise the next time you will start the hadoop it will be starting only on those 10 machines because your slaves file does not know anything about your two newly added machines so this change we will make now moving uh, to the next step the next step is start the new data nodes we have added the data nodes that's fine we have made the required changes in the configuration file that's also fine but how the machine will automatically start how the machine will uh, run the required process so we need to do that manually so what you will do you will go to the bin directory of uh, a newly added machine and from there you will type dot slash hadoop hyphen daemon dot sh space start space data node you know that slave machine runs only two process data node and task tracker so manually we will start these two process on uh, those two newly added machines and once this process will be running they will be communicating automatically with their master part so your data node will start communicating with your uh, name node and task tracker will start communicating with your job tracker ultimately instead of 10 now you are having 12 machine in your cluster so check the new data nodes and task trackers appear in the web ui web ui means your browser you can open this uh, master colon 50070 or if you are doing this thing on local machine you can try local host colon 50070 previously it was showing live nodes is equal to 10 but this time as we have done all these steps if you will open this page on the browser this page should display live nodes is equal to 12 so you can click on live nodes link and you can see the list of all those machines if slave 11 and slave 12 are appearing in the list that means you have successfully commissioned a single or a multiple machines without disturbing anything we didn't stop hadoop we didn't restart hadoop but still we have added two more machine to the running hadoop cluster so this was all about how to commission uh, a new node to the existing cluster so we are moving now towards the next topic and that is decommissioning so we can remove any node any machine from existing hadoop cluster if required there may be uh, different reasons behind removing the machines your project might be over and you want to maintain very few machines in your cluster just for maintenance purpose so in that scenario we can remove or you may be saying that my jobs are getting completed in very uh, less amount of time and i don't need those all machines so please remove half of the machines so 
in case you are uh, really interested to remove the machine from the cluster this decommissioning will help you to do the same so the data should be copied to alternate node before this node leaves the cluster yes that's absolutely right we have to remove the machine from the cluster but that does not mean that we will simply shut down the system we can't do that because that may be participating in some storage definitely that contains your blocks and that may be participating in some map produce programming so before we remove this machine from the cluster we have to make sure that this machine is not participating in processing this machine is not participating in any storage and whatever data is stored on this machine that should be copied to some alternate machine so that removing of this machine does not affect the running Hadoop cluster. So removing an old machine from the existing Hadoop cluster is known as decommissioning. So decommissioning a node from the cluster will definitely decrease the storage and the processing capacity of Hadoop cluster. Because previously your data was stored on 10 machines and your jobs were uh, distributed among 10 machines and now you are planning to remove 4 machines from the cluster so the data will be stored on remaining 6 machines and now onwards whatever job will be coming those also will be distributed among 6 machines only so the jobs which was uh, previously executed by 10 machines and taking some time now if the same job will be executed uh, by the six machines definitely they will take more time so before removing the machine from the cluster this point must be clear in your mind that removing the machine will decrease the storage and processing capacity if you are okay with that and if you are really interested to remove then we have the steps using which we can easily remove the machine from the existing cluster So let's move to the next slide in which we will talk about the steps involved in decommissioning. So we have the first step, add the network address of the nodes to be decommissioned to the exclude file. Okay, this time we have exclude file. So the machine that may be single machine or that may be multiple suppose out of a 10 machine you are planning to remove four machines so add those four machines name maybe slave 7 slave 8 slave 9 and slave 10 suppose these are the four machines which you want to remove from your existing cluster so you will add these four names to the exclude file the next is do not update the include file at this time yes you may be thinking that these machine will not be part of our Hadoop cluster so why should we keep these names in include file let's remove that but no we will do that but not right now the reason being is if you will remove the names right now that means the name will not be available in include file and without that your machine cannot communicate with name node and without communicating whatever data is stored on these four machines that cannot be copied to some alternate machine because name node is a master machine it will give the instruction to these four machines that please copy your data to some that machine to slave 1, slave 3, slave 5 like that that means until or unless our data is uh, copied we will keep connected our machines we will not remove the name from include file so moving to the third step update the name node with the new set of permitted nodes using below command we have made the changes in exclude file that means name node and job tracker should not use these four machines for uh, storage or processing but name node and job tracker does not automatically know if you have made some changes that means we have to intimate 
the name node and job tracker with the help of commands just like we did it in a commissioning process so let's check it out we will execute this command from the bin directory of Hadoop and the command is dot slash Hadoop space DFS admin space hyphen refresh nodes we are telling the name node that we have made some changes in a uh, exclude file please take the latest entries and similarly we will execute the next command that is dot slash Hadoop MR admin hyphen refresh nodes which will intimate the job tracker that we have made some changes in exclude file and please refresh your node list please take the latest entries now name node knows that these four machine slave 7 slave 8 slave 9 and slave 10 these machines are under decommissioning that means whatever request is coming from user copy from local or copy to local name node will not forward any request to these four machines because we have the duplicate copy available on some alternate machine so name node may be redirecting your request to some alternate machine and similarly job tracker will not consider this machine for distributing the task if a new job is coming it will distribute just considering that there are six machine in the cluster it will not assign anything to slave 7 slave 8 slave 9 and slave 10 so we have done you can say half of our decommissioning process now the only thing remaining is the data which is stored on this four machine that should be copied to some alternate machine so the fifth step go to the web UI open the page that localhost 50070 or if you are on multiple machine you can use this master colon 50070 so previously it was uh, showing that live nodes is equal to 10 and decommissioning nodes is equal to 0 if you remember the first time we opened this page 50070 and I was talking about each and everything on that page and when this come like decommissioning nodes I said that we will cover this thing in more detail on some other day so today is that day we are talking about decommissioning so previously when your uh, Hadoop cluster with 10 machines was running and you were opening this 50070 page then it was written on that page live nodes is equal to 10 decommissioning nodes 0 but this time if you will open this page you will find live nodes is equal to 10 decommissioning nodes is equal to 4 because out of 10 machines 4 machines are under decommissioning and if you will click on those you will see more details on another page and you will find these names slave 7 slave 8 slave 9 slave 10 and their current state is decommissioning in progress what does this mean decommissioning in progress so decommissioning in progress means the data is being copied to some alternate machine and this state is known as decommissioning in progress so as a user you don't have to do anything Hadoop master machine will automatically start copying the blocks to other data nodes in the cluster and you can keep on monitoring the things because depending upon the size of your data it might take some time so you may be uh, going to this page again and you can keep on refreshing that page so the state of those machines will change from decommissioning in progress to decommissioned so when all the data nodes report their state as decommissioned that means all the blocks all the data have been copied from these machine to the alternate machine so at this point of time these four machine are neither participating in storage nor participating in processing and they don't have the data also 
it's time to shut down the system without affecting anything so you can simply shut down these uh, four machines and now the task which we left we did not uh, remove the name from include file we will do that right now so remove the notes from the include file and then we can execute this command dot slash hadoop dfs admin hyphen refresh notes so that this machine cannot communicate with name node again just like we have removed the name from include file we need to remove the name from slaves file as well otherwise next time you will type dot slash start all dot sh and it will try to start the required services on slave 1 slave 2 slave 3 till slave 10 but now slave 7 8 9 and 10 are not part of our cluster so just remove these four names from your slaves file as well so that whenever you are doing the start all or stop all it consider only those six machines slave 1 2 slave 6 and this way you have successfully decommissioned a single or multiple nodes from your existing running Hadoop cluster. So we are moving now to the next topic that is ACL. So ACL stands for access control list. That is something related to access. That is something related to security in Hadoop. So ACL contains list of authorized users and groups who can perform specific activity on Hadoop cluster. You know that in Linux we have uh, different users, different groups and we cannot allow everyone to do the activities on Hadoop cluster. You may be creating some data and some other user may delete that. So that's not a good thing. Similarly, you may be executing some unnecessary MapReduce job and our important jobs are waiting for the resources. That means every team member in the team should not be allowed to submit the job. Only few uh, senior guys should be allowed to submit the job. So using ACL, we can maintain security in Hadoop. So Hadoop does not allow the user to perform the activity who are not part of ACL. Okay, if some team member is there and his name is not the part of access control list. That means suppose that user is not allowed to submit the job as per this security setting. So he will not be allowed and if he will try to do that, the terminal will throw the error. It will say that as per security policy, you are not allowed to submit the job. And this is the responsibility of Hadoop admin to manage this access control list. So let's move uh, to the next slide. Why do we need ACL? Why do we need security in Hadoop? So by default Hadoop is not secure. That means anyone can do any type of activity. That's not a good practice. When you are in production environment, every file is critical, everything is uh, required, everything is important. So you cannot allow all the team members to do any activity on your production cluster. But without using ACL, because by default Hadoop is not secure, so if you are not using ACL, that means any user can do any activity on your Hadoop cluster. Let's suppose that someone is executing this command dot slash Hadoop fs hyphen rmr root rm command used for removing and rmr removing recursively that means whatever path you will specify it will start deleting from that location it will keep on going inside the subdirectory subdirectory till the last that means if i have provided the root location it will start deleting from root ending uh, with everything that means after few minutes after some time you will not find anything on your hdfs 
So a small command can delete everything from your Hadoop cluster. This is just an example. Another example may be like some user might have started some unnecessary Hadoop job and they might have given some unnecessary input paths. So that job will keep on running and other important jobs may be waiting for their sources. So to avoid these type of scenario, we can use ACL. So ACL help us to control the access of different users to Hadoop. We can decide like which user can do which type of activity. So using ACL, we can make our Hadoop secure. So let's check it out. What are the required steps to make our Hadoop secure? First of all, we have to add this property to the core site.xml file. You know that core site.xml file is available in our conf directory. So we can simply open that and we will add this property along with whatever properties are already there in your file. So the name of the property is hadoop.security.authorization. The name itself is meaningful. We are talking about security authorization mechanism in Hadoop. And the value must be true. Why we are defining this property in core side.xml? Because this property is already defined in core default.xml. But the value over there is false this one that is false so whenever we want to change the value of any property you know that we cannot make the change in default file instead we will copy that property from default file and we will paste that property into our site specific file and then we can make the change just like the default replication factor is 3 in default file but we can copy that property and we can define that property in HDFS site.xml and we can change the value. Similarly, this value which is false, which is making our Hadoop unsecure, we will define this property again in core site.xml and now we will make the value as true. If you want to see, the description is also there. To enable authorization, that is ACL in Hadoop. So, this is one step which you need to do. Let's move to the next one. The next is Hadoop policy.xml file. Okay, first of all, where is this file located and what does this contain? So let us check it out. So we'll go to our Hadoop and we'll go to the conf directory. And here you will find Hadoop policy.xml this one you know that whatever files we need to modify those are available in the conf directory only so let me open this file so this is the file which contains the list of authorized users authorized groups so you can see different type of properties are uh, available here so these different properties are for different type of security. You can see that security dot job dot submission dot protocol dot ACL. This property is talking about the job submission settings. Which user can submit the job. So as per our requirement, we can make the required changes in the value of this property. You can see that the value of every property is star next property again star next property the value is again star and these stars are making our Hadoop unsecure because star means all the users are allowed so we have to remove the star and instead of star what we have to type so let's talk about that in more detail on the PDF So this is the property that is security.job.submission.protocol.acl and the value is star. The description of this property is ACL for job submission protocol. 
used by job clients to communicate with job tracker for job submission or killing of job etc the acl is a comma separated list of users and group names the user and group list is separated by a blank for example ravi comma swati space developers comma testers we have two lists now one list is of users that is ravi comma swati so all the names in the user list will be separated by comma similarly we have one more list developer comma test this is the list of groups separated by comma and these two list user list and group list these two list are separated by the blank you can see that so instead of star you will put like this a comma separated list of user then space and a comma separated list of groups now ravi swati all the members of developers group and all the member of testers group are allowed to submit the job if anyone else who is neither swati nor ravi and nor the part of developers and tester that user if he will try to submit the job the terminal will throw the error that as per security policy you are not allowed to submit the job so this way we can control which user can do which type of activity on our hadoop cluster and you can uh, read out the last line as well a special value of star means all users are allowed so if you want to use security in hadoop you have to remove the star so what you can do remove the star write your username suppose your username is uh, neeraj so you will type neeraj over there and then you will try to submit the job so since your name is available in the list you will be allowed to submit the job that's fine now remove neeraj and write something suppose abc this time if you will try to submit the job you will not be allowed to submit the job because as per acl as per your hadoop policy.xml you are not allowed to submit the job so this is all about hadoop policy.xml file the next and the most important thing is refreshing service acl just by making the change in a uh, hadoop policy.xml does not mean that these setting will be immediately reflected no these files are loaded when you are doing start all.sh so if you are making any changes in between when your hadoop is running you have to execute one command you have to intimate the name node that we have made the changes in hadoop policy.xml so please refresh that and after refreshing only those setting will be uh, in effect so you can see now whenever we make any change to acl we need to refresh the acl and for that we will executing the command that is dot slash hadoop dfs admin hyphen refresh service acl s of service and a of acl are capital so this way you can uh, refresh the service acl and whatever changes you have made those will be immediately reflected so this was all about acl how to make your hadoop secure and with this slide we are done for the day